Hey guys and welcome to this episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia and I'm coming to you from Germany. Today is Thursday the 16th of March 2017. So thank you so much for watching my podcast today, which is a podcast about knitting mostly. Um, if you're watching for the very first time, I really hope that you like it. And if you're coming back, thank you ever so much. I love that some of you come back every week. And those of you who do will know that I don't usually record on a uh, Thursday. I actually meant to record earlier, but that didn't happen for reasons that I'll tell about later. So anyways, I'm recording now and I just got home from work and trying to make most of the lighting that I have. So I'm going to try to make this relatively fast. I hope that's okay. Um, so today I'll talk about the Ravelry group stuff first and then about finished objects, works in progress, acquisitions and life in general. So um, very quickly, we have a Ravelry group called the Happy Knitting Podcast group, and that is where you'll find all of the show notes. So if you have any questions, check the show notes first, because I will link all of my projects and you can find out all kinds of yarn details, needle sizes and so on through my project page. And if you don't find what you're looking for, you can just ask the question on Ravelry, which makes it easier for me to answer. Um, in the group we have two cows running at the moment. We have the One Ball with Love cow, which is an informal commercial sock yarn knit along. So join that at any time you want. Just knit some commercial sock yarn that you have in your stash. Um, and like I said, it's informal, so there are no prizes, no deadlines, just have fun. And we also have the Geeky Sock Along, which is a proper knit along, which means it has an FO thread, a chatter thread, it runs until the end of March, so we're in the final last leg of the Geeky Socks. All the info about prizes and all that kind of stuff can be found in the chatter thread as well, so just check that out. And please just look at the threads because there are so many fun Geeky Socks. It is incredible. I kind of don't want this um, cow to ever end because it's just so much fun. So that's what's going on in the Ravelry group. Um, and I will just jump into finished objects because I have quite a few. In fact, I have three pairs of socks finished. Um, so I'll start with a pair that you haven't seen as a work in progress. And But I talked about the yarn last week and the yarn that I used was some Vollmeiser yarn that I actually purchased last week. Well, this is what my boyfriend purchased. But anyways, I mentioned last week in detail that I, we, went, we went to the Vollmeiser store, which is close to Munich. and. Kai picked out this skein of yarn, which he really loved and wanted me to cast on socks immediately. So I did cast them on actually the day that I last recorded one and a half weeks ago. And I knit him a pair of socks. So for this pair, because he kind of has skinny legs, but big feet. So they kind of, he has complained that the socks are too loose up here. So I actually cast on the ribbing on a size zero, two millimeter needle. And then after the ribbing, I went up to a 3.25 millimeter US size one needle and I knit these over um, 64 stitches. So sli slightly less stitches than I would usually use just because this yarn is a little bit thicker. And I was really, really interested in how this yarn would knit up. It is in their twin base, which is their, I believe it's an 80-20. It's a sock base with a nylon content. And it's quite different. Um, it feels very different and I'm pretty sure it's because this is actually an eight plied yarn, a fingering weight, but just with uh, more pliers, which makes it more um, durable, I guess. At least that's the idea. So I was really interested if I would like to actually knit with it because it has a different feel and I did really enjoy it. I actually, I think that's why this pair went so fast is because I just couldn't stop knitting on them. And uh, my boy boyfriend has actually worn these. I finished them a couple of days ago. So these have been washed and as you can see, um, the Vollmeiser yarn still looks absolutely perfect. Whereas this Cascade Heritage, which is a more soft um, four ply sock yarn, Cascade Heritage solids in the mustard colorway, has just fussed up a tiny bit more, which is not terrible at all. But I, it just shows that I think the Vollmeiser yarn is just that little bit more durable. So if these hold up very well, I will definitely be knitting more of Wollmeister socks for Kai, especially because he goes through his socks so fast. I mentioned this before. I don't know what he does to his socks, 
but somehow his socks look absolutely ruined sometimes after he wore them once. So yeah, I'm really, really happy with these. The yarn has softened up quite a lot after washing. I did hand wash these because they are so saturated and I was just worried that they might bleed and they did bleed a little bit. So I think now they'll be fine, but just for the first washing with very bright colors, I do tend to hand wash them. So these are his socks and I actually already wound up, wound up the rest of the yarn into two small balls and I only used about, I think, 56% of the yarn. So I can make another pair of shorty socks or something for me. So I'm really excited about that. So, oh yeah, and the colorway is called Raupe in case I didn't mention that. That is caterpillar in German. So that's my first pair of socks, well, Kai's socks. And he loves these so much. These are his new favorite socks. So that's great. Next, I also finished these socks. And I'm running out of sock blockers, so I just put one on a sock blocker. Um, I mentioned this last week. Um, this is um, yarn from Emmy Lou, who is a German indie dyer as well. This is in her Merino Twist Base, which is an 80-20 Merino nylon blend. I don't know the colorway, but it is really, really lovely. It's so squishy and beautiful, and I enjoy knitting with it very much. And these speckles are just incredibly fun. And as you can see, it has a textured pattern, and this is... Um, a textured stitch that I stole from a free knitty pattern on knitty.com which is called the Ringwood Gloves and I just used that textured stitch to knit these socks and the pattern is linked in my show notes as well and yeah they just came out so nicely and with this textured stitch they're just very sort of squishy and I absolutely love them I can't wait to wear them so these will be for me I knit a relatively long leg a 2x2 two two rib and as usual I put in my fish lips kiss heel which I pretty much always do because I'm just obsessed with it. So these are done and I knit these two at a time um, on 2.25 millimeter needles and the stitch marker is where I was last week or I guess almost two weeks ago. So I'm super happy with these. I love the yarn. I need to get some more very badly but I shouldn't be buying yarn. So anyways um, that's another pair finished. And I also finished a third pair of socks, which was the first pattern in Mina Phillips' um, New York sock collection. Um, and she's the host of the Knitting Expat podcast. So the first pattern came out on the 1st of March, and you can only get this pattern in within the club. So you have to purchase the entire club, of, which consists of seven sock patterns, I believe. Um, and this is the Grand Central Socks. Um, and it has this really fun textured bobbly sort of stitch um, which is a tiny bit more time intensive to knit but I think it really pays off it is very very beautiful and as you can see I only did the patterning on the front of the sock and yeah I love these so much the yarn that I used for this was hedgerow yarns in the fun fetty colorway and this is her merino nylon high twist yarn which is super super pretty I just I've been hoarding her yarn kind of <laughs> Uh, this is the first time I've actually knitted into socks and I'm so happy I did because it is just so beautiful. It has all these fun speckles and kind of reminds me a little bit of hedgehog fibers or something like that. I'm very curious to see how this will wear. I believe it's a two-ply so it kind of seems to be a little bit more fuzzy. And, but I haven't worn these yet so we'll just see. Again I used the fish lips kiss heel and yeah I really enjoyed these. I knit them um, concurrently but not two at a time. And then after, I think last week I showed you those, I had one heel done and one to go, and then I just ended up finishing them one by one because I had to steal needles for other projects. I actually have bought some more needles because I keep on switching needles from projects because I just don't have enough. So yeah, anyways, that's why these ended up actually being finished just one at a time. So that's it for my socks for this week. Um, and that's also the reason why I've wanted to get a podcast out because I want to wear these socks and they're just piling up. They actually really need to be taken, for, like they need to be taken, blah, blah, blah. They need to be photographed as well to go on my Ravelry page, but I just haven't had any time. So we'll see when that happens. Um, moving on to works in progress. And 
I cast on a new project which is not socked. So I cast on a shawl with some yarn that I've been wanting to knit up for ages. This yarn is um, some really luxurious heavy lace yarn that I actually won in a giveaway last year. It is from Spirit Trail Fiber Works and in there, in there Nona Base, N-O-N-A. And it's a 50% Superwash Merino, 25% Cashmere, 25% Bombix Silk yarn. So it's a very luxurious and it has just kind of been waiting for the perfect project. And I decided to take this with me, just cake it up and take it with me to our little holiday because I just really wanted to think about what I want to knit with it and yeah. So when I won this last year I got two skeins, they are 50 gram skeins or I think 60 gram skeins, they are 300 yards each so it's between like a light fingering and a heavy lace weight yarn. And you guys this is so soft. It's also very loosely plied so it just makes for a beautiful yarn. And the pink one is called Pink Sands and this one is called Bison. So I kind of browsed Ravelry for a long time because I like knitting lace weight yarns but I feel like sometimes especially with these sort of in between lace weight and fingering weight yarns there's not that many patterns that work with yardage and everything so I in the end decided to knit the amulet shawl which was part of um, Helen Stewart's um, shawl society last year. I was part of that but I only ever knit one shawl so I really wanted to actually get some knit up. And this pattern is not necessarily written, I think it's written for fingering weight, but I'm just deciding to just go for it and I think I might just be fine and if not, I'll just fudge it. So, um, the amulet shawl is a top-down triangular shawl and that's exactly what I've been doing. So I've, I'm still on the very first color. It kind of starts out as a just garter stitch triangle and then you'll have different lacy sections with both colors. So not that much to show you guys yet. Let's see. You get the idea. But it, this has been really, really fun to knit because the yarn is just so nice to knit with. I am knitting it on 3.5 millimeter US size four needles. I think the pattern is written for four millimeter, but I decided with the lighter yarn and you know my strange obsession with 3.5 millimeter needles anyways. So we'll just see how this goes. Hoping for the best, but I'm really enjoying it. I'm just working a little bit at a time with this. And yeah, so that's my amulet shawl. And I believe it's actually the second, only the second shawl that I've knit this year. Because I just don't knit that many shawls at the moment. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how the colors will work out together. Um, next, of course, there are more socks. So I cast on last week, actually exactly a week ago, with some yarn that I've been hoarding because it's really, really special to me. And that is my sock blank from Stranded Dye Works, um, which is dyed by Amy, who has the Stranded Knits podcast, I believe. Um, and my boyfriend Kai gave this to me for Christmas and I absolutely love it. I've been wanting to try something for a store for ages and I've been hoarding it instead of using it. So I decided to just break into the sock blank and start knitting a sock from it and this is what I've done. <laughs> so I, this sock will be for myself. So I cast on 64 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, I did 20 rows of 2x2 two two rib and then just a very long stock in that sock because I just really like to make most of my sock blanks. Um, they tend to be the most special yarns and I just really like to get as much of it in the sock as possible. So I put in a contrasting um, heel this is just some Lang Yavol yarn and I think I'm pretty much um, at the point where I need to put in the toe. I just didn't have the brain power to measure and calculate that yesterday but I think the toe will be put in and I have to weigh this yarn and see if I have enough. I'd like to um, do the toe in the sock blank color as well but I need to measure first to make sure I have enough yarn. And as you can see the sock is turning out really really beautifully. It does look a little bit crinkly now, which is just the nature of sock blank sock yarn. But once I wash it, that crinkliness will go away. And I love how it's kind of stripy and pulling at the same time. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm obsessed with sock blanks and I really need to order some more yarn from Amy as well, because this is just so beautiful. This is in her 7525 Merino Nylon Blend in the street 
street art kind of way? Let's see. Street art? Yes. So this is her logo in case you were wondering. So that's the first sock that I've been working on. And this one, I also addicted to it. And I feel like with sock blanks, it's kind of like stripy yarn. It goes really fast. Um, I've also recently started a new sock project because I needed something to keep me busy. Um, and it's kind of insane, but I'm actually knitting a pair of socks toe up, which is something I very rarely do. But I just felt like switching it up. So I started a another pair of socks. Um, and I'm using some commercial yarn to use this for my One Ball with Love Cow. And this is Opal in their Wetterleuchten series. Cutaway number 9325. So this is their logo. And I just picked this up a couple of months back because it looked really fun. And this is what I've done so far. So I do think these will probably be for me, but we'll see. Um, and I just cast on 12 stitches using Judy's Magic Cast On. And you guys, I am so bad at that. I keep on messing it up. I think I had to do it like three times. And I've done it before. Like I managed, managed it fine before. But I'm just very stupid when it comes to that, which is a major reason why I knit my socks cuff down. I find Kitchener Stitch super easy, but Judy's Magic Cast On, I don't know. Anyways, I just knitted a normal wedge toe and now I'm just knitting a very, very standard toe up vanilla sock. And yeah, I'm just enjoying the colors. Um, the stitch marker is from Knitting I Love, by the way. But yeah, it's just, it's just fun and I just knit vanilla socks in the round. It's like the most mindless thing you can do. These are also on 65, uh, 64 stitches using my 2.25 millimeter needles. I do sometimes go up to 2.5 US one and a half for a commercial sock yarn, but these ones I just wanted the gauge to be slightly tighter and I'm really liking how this is coming out. So yeah, these are just for fun and I'm really enjoying them. So I added four squares this week. Um, this one is from, whoops. Um, all about yarn. Jenny sent this to me ages ago. It's, it's pretty dark, so all the, uh, it's kind of darker than it shows up on here. This one is um, from the Bern Wolle, I think her first or second sock lab last year. She did this um, coral reef colorway, I believe it's called, and I knit a pair of socks out of this. This is from She Bought Garne in their um, Be My Valentine's col uh, Be My w Valentine colorway from last year. Um, and this one is from Kim of Golding Yarn. She sent this to me and this is just super bright and I love it. So I just did four squares using 2.25 millimeter needles. And as I mentioned before, I'm using Kemper Ray's Coziest Memories pattern, which is a free pattern on Ravelry, except I'm doing 56 stitches. So these are slightly larger squares and I'm really, really enjoying them. Um, so my last work in progress is of course my harvest sweater and this could be finished but when we went away which is where I did most of my knitting I didn't take any of my backup skeins which was really stupid in hindsight because I'm alterna alternating skeins so I finished the first skein that I was alternating and then I couldn't really do anything but this is the harvest, card uh, harvest cardigan by Tin Can Knits, which is a free pattern. It's a top-down cardigan and I'm knitting it for myself using Malabriga Rios um, in the Sabiduria colorway. And as you can see, it's quite long. I think I might start the ribbing or I think it has like a moss stitch at the bottom. So I'm not quite sure what I'll be doing, but I will probably be starting the bottom hem of some kind very soon. And the sleeves are already knit. It fits really beautifully. I've tried it on and I'm really in love with it. I think I'm gonna have, um, use it very much, which is also why I want to finish it before it gets too hot. But I'm really enjoying it. And because I only have to knit, you know, the bottom and then I'll be done, this should hopefully be done pretty soon. But having said that, ever since we got back, I didn't pick it up once. But I just, I think if I just sit down like once or twice, this should be done. So I'm looking forward to that and Hopefully I'll have a finished object very soon. And now I somehow got my microphone cord tangled up in the yarn. Isn't that great? 
Oh, okay. So that's it for my works in progress. I hope that wasn't too all over the place. I just wanted to get it out there. Um, and I have a few acquisitions. Like I mentioned, I got some new higher hires just because I kept on switching out needles and that just turns into a bit of a hassle. So I got another set of high high sharps, 2.25 millimeters and one in the 2.0 millimeters. So a US size zero and a US size one. And as I mentioned before, I, in Germany, I always get them from Paradise of Wool or Paradise of Yarn. I never know. I think it's Paradise of Yarn. And so if you're in Germany, that might be interesting to you because they're incredibly cheap there for some reason. And as you know, higher higher sharps are my favorite needles along with the um, Chagu Red Lace. Um, next, I also got my second shipment of the Yarn Club from Herbstblatt Regina. So if you're in the Yarn Club and you haven't received yours, please do look away because I'm going to show the yarn. So it is a Western inspired sock club and the second one is called Dances with the Wolves. And this is what it looks like. Again, like the first one, very much out of my color comfort zone, which is why I ordered it. I expected it to be a bit different and I really enjoy that. So I got it in her hazel soft sock, which is an 80-20 merino nylon. And it is so soft. I haven't knit with any of the skeins yet. But as you can see, this one has this sort of gray greenish base and these speckles. And it's really interesting. So I'm very interested in how this will knit up. And yeah. So Hausbad Regina is, of course, also a German indie dyer who is on Etsy. Um, and then there is one more yarn that I wanted to show you because I just thought it was too amazing not to share. And that is um, this yarn. It is BC Gun, which I believe is a Dan Danish brand. And this was new in my local yarn store. It's their Bio Balance. So this is a 55% pure organic wool, 45% pure organic cotton. And it feels really soft. I don't really like cotton, but this feels really great. And this is amazing because it has the GOTS certification, which means that it is ethically produced and organic. And I feel like there should be way more yarns out there that are nicely produced and, you know, some horrible sh things are done to sheep. So whenever I, I, um, I see yarns like this, I just jump on them because I think that's amazing. I've knit with Busy Yarn with a different base before and really enjoyed it. So I picked up these three 50 gram skeins. They were actually really affordable as well. So I don't know how BC Garen does it, but this is going to be some fun shawl. I kind of picked up more toned down colors because I'm thinking about office shawls and stuff now as well. And I really love them. So I just thought I had to share that with you because I, that's just, it's just really great. I love a good ethical yarn. And this is a fingering weight. Yes, 225 meters per 50 grams. So I just wanted to share that. That's it for my acquisition this week, which is good because I'm not really, I shouldn't really be buying that much yarn after last week and the entire Wollnice adventure. But oh well, go big or go home. So I'll be right back with my life in general. So if you're only here for the knitting, then I'll just see you next week. And if not, please stick around and I'll see you in a second. So I'm back with a little bit of a delay because my computer decided to go on strike and not do anything anymore. But anyways, um, I'm just going to quickly talk about what's been going on. And if you're interested in that, that's great. So as you may or may not know, last week was my last week before starting the job. So I spent a lot of time knitting and catching up with friends and just trying to make most of the time that I had. And then we took a four day trip or a four and a half day trip, I guess, once again down to the, um, a southern region of Germany called Allgäu, which is where we've been a lot of times. So if you've been watching this podcast for a while, you will be sick of me talking about it. But it's this tiny apartment that we can stay at for free because it's in Kai's family. And it's really beautiful and I think we had the most amazing trip we've ever had there. For the first time we actually had fantastic weather. I mean it was pretty cold but because it's Germany and it's March. But we had I think exactly like five days just sunny and actually warm enough to be sitting outside having coffee and 
we did a few little trips and one hike and we had yeah we just had the best time um i will try to put in a few photos i didn't take too many photos because i just always forget but we had amazing views over the alps and we stuffed ourselves with food and it was really really good to get away and enjoy this time before serious life started for me it was actually really weird to be going back and both of us going to the office so anyways i obviously did a crazy amount of knitting there and it was great um, and then we drove back on tuesday afternoon i guess it's about a one and a half hour drive from where we live so that's not too bad and then yesterday which was wednesday i started my new job and yes i was quite anxious and nervous and i basically spent the last two weeks worrying about it and overthinking everything but it was really good <laughs> simple as that it seems to be going pretty good um and i was positively surprised i think i was kind of telling myself to not have too high expectations and you know i might hate it in the beginning and have to get used to it so when it, i started yesterday and it was actually fine that just makes me very happy and so i had my second day today and it's going pretty good so far as far as i can tell everyone seems nice it, the atmosphere seems good so i'm pretty happy i have to get used to you know the whole office thing and you know all of the work that i've done before besides was either in service like you know as a barista selling coffee or sort of home office things that i did on the side and going into a full on um, nine to five job is kind of very different but yes like i said i'm enjoying it so far and I think only time will tell how it will go, but I'm really, really happy so far. And talking about that, I was so overwhelmed with the amount of people who got in touch with me and remembered that it was my first day yesterday and it was just so amazing. I actually got almost teary eyed when I left last, uh, yesterday after work and yeah, it made me quite emotional, but it was so sweet. So thank you so much for everyone who sent me well wishes and the sun is coming up straight into my face right now, so yeah. Anyways, I'm not showing anything, so just ignore that. Thank you guys so much for your support. It's kind of crazy because this is all my, you know, personal life struggle and growing up. And to think that so many people in my knitting community care and reach out is just insane. It really, it just drives me nuts. And yeah, just thank you so much. I, I couldn't appreciate it anymore. And this light is really driving me nuts. Um, so I think with that, I'm just going to let you guys go. Um, podcast wise, I do really want to keep recording every week. And with my schedule so far, it seems like it is possible because I start the earliest in the firm so I can leave the earliest as well. So at least in summer, I'm or like now, I can even record in the afternoon after work. So that's fantastic because I was worried that I would only ever have time on the weekends and that would make it a little bit more difficult, but it seems to be easy. So I do want to have some kind of weekly format going forward. Not entirely sure when I'll be recording. I just kind of really, I try not to overdo it because I already, my first day I was planning to podcast and then I was like, maybe I should just take it slow and see how it goes. But I do plan to be back next week, hopefully with lots of knitting um, I have a few knitting plans and I think I will have a weekend of basically nothing but knitting because that's all I want to do now. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and getting through this with me. This might not have been the most organized and <laughs> relaxed episode because like I said, it's just kind of, I decided to record on a whim when I, just when I got back. So I hope that's okay. It was lovely to chat with you anyways, and I will see you next week, and maybe we'll chat on the Ravelry group or on YouTube. I always love hearing from you guys, so yeah, if you have any questions, do let me know, and otherwise, I will see you next week. Have a good week. Have a good weekend. It's almost Friday, which is almost the weekend, and I couldn't be more excited. Um, happy knitting. See you next week. Bye.